In earlier videos, we've covered how to compile your manuscript using one of Scrivener's preset formats. But if you want more control over your final document, if you have to adhere to a strict house style, or if you just prefer to go your own way, Scrivener gives you the power to create and save your own compile format. To demonstrate, I've got a novel here with chapter folders and scenes nested within those folders as subdocuments. There's a title page and a dedication to come before the novel text, and acknowledgements to appear at the end. We're using the same project from the previous videos about section types, so all the section types are assigned already, and we'll set up custom section layouts for each of these later in the video. If you haven't already seen the previous videos about section types, I recommend going back to those to see how this project was set up before you continue any further with this video. First of all, if one of the preset formats is already close to what you want, you can clone it and customise it from there. To do this, select a format from the list, then click the plus icon and choose Duplicate and Edit. This opens a deeper level of the compile settings where you can tweak the settings we're going to cover in the rest of this video. Once you hit save, the new format will be saved to the compiler. To cover all this in depth though, I'm going to demonstrate creating a format from scratch. Start by clicking the plus icon and choosing New Format. New formats will always be based on the default format, so there are some default settings here already. We'll name it Custom Novel for now. The drop down below that will let you choose between saving it in Project Formats and My Formats. There's a key difference here. Project formats are only available to this project, but if you move the project to another computer, the format moves with it. On the other hand, choosing My Formats saves the format elsewhere on your computer, but makes it available to all your other Scrivener projects. I'm going to save this to My Formats. At the top of this column on the left, clicking the COG icon will let you choose which file types this format will be available for. This is an important consideration when some file types don't support specific fonts, or in the case of ebooks, where the formatting is controlled by the device it's read on, not the ebook file itself. Once you've made your selection, you can use this drop down list to choose a file type, which will allow you to access some settings which are unique to that file type. For example, when you're setting up a PDF, a PDF settings tab appears here, allowing you to adjust the appearance of internal links and generate a PDF outline, a navigational feature only available with PDF readers. Similarly, when setting up Compile to a rich text file like RTF, Word or OpenOffice, you'll get an RTF compatibility tab which controls settings pertinent to rich text editors. EPUB has a tab which allows you to control formatting through custom CSS. Final Draft has a script settings tab with some options for converting to Final Draft screenplay elements and overriding fonts. With that said, many of the options here are available across all types of files, so if your compile format is going to apply to multiple file types, you can set up everything for one file type, then go through the unique options for the others in case you need to make changes to any file-specific settings. We're going to choose PDF for most of this demonstration, since pretty much all the settings present here are shared by the other file types. The first tab here is Section Layouts. This allows you to create and customise the section layouts which appear in the central column of the main compiler. Creating a layout here will make it available when you assign layouts to your section types. You can add and remove layouts using the plus and minus icons. When you add a new layout, it will duplicate whichever layout was selected in the box below, so you have a starting point. But if you delete all the existing layouts using the minus button, the first new layout you add will be blank. I have some very specific requirements that I want from this format. In the text itself, I want the book title to appear in the header on the left hand or verso pages and the author's name to appear on the right hand recto pages. The page number should appear in the footer on the outside corner, but I don't want any headers or footers on any of my front or back matter. The title page, dedication and chapters should all begin on a recto page. I also want a few lines of padding to appear at the top of new chapter pages. First of all, I'll create a section layout for our chapter folders. We want this to print the chapter number at the start of each new chapter, so we'll tab over to the title options and enter the tag for a chapter number. You can enter N if you want a numeral, but I'm using T because I want the number to be written out. We'll also add the word chapter before it. When we tab back over to formatting, we can see how this looks and make adjustments in font. I'm going to put this in 48 point times New Roman. If we wanted to add the chapter title here, or use it instead of the chapter number, we could check the title box above and format that as well. We'll leave that out of this section layout for now, but we could always come back and create a new layout later. Finally, let's click on New Pages to set up what I mentioned earlier. We want three blank lines of padding at the beginning of each chapter, and we want each chapter to begin on a recto page. 
Now for the main text. We'll create a new section layout which has cloned itself from our chapter heading, so let's delete the chapter number, reset the page padding, and we can even uncheck the recto page option because the text will follow on from the chapter heading. We'll need to check the text box, telling Scrivener to insert the document text, and we'll check override text and notes formatting so we can make changes. We'll set this in 12 point times New Roman. In New Pages, we'll specify that each section will start with six uppercase words, and in settings we'll eliminate the first line indent for the opening paragraph. At this point you should be getting a feel for how to create section types, so I'll set up the rest of them myself and move on to the Styles tab. I've been quite sparing with styles in this project, but I have a few block quotes which I want to be formatted differently from the rest of the text. The Styles tab will allow you to override the formatting for any styles used in your project without changing how the text appears in Scrivener's editor. In this case, I'll add the block quote style here, and set it up so block quotes appear in 10 point times New Roman with block indents. Now anything in my manuscript which uses the block quote style will be reformatted this way. You can use the Styles tab to override any styled text, keeping in mind that any unstyled text or styles which you don't add to this list will be affected by the formatting you set up in your section layouts. The Styles tab also gives you the option to remove all of the text of that style from your compiled manuscript, so if you take notes in a specific style, you could add the notes style to this list and check delete text of this style. It's also worth noting that although the Styles tab prompts you to add styles from this particular project, if you use this compile format with other projects, the styles defined here will override any styles with the same names there too, so block quotes in another project would be affected by the same formatting I've applied to the block quotes in this project. Next we'll visit the Separators tab. This tab controls what happens when the compiler stitches together two documents from your project. Does a page break occur between them, or are they separated by a symbol or a blank line? You can make that decision here. There are default separators for folders and text files, but you can set different separators at the beginning or end of each section layout. In this case, we'll add a page break at the start of each new chapter to make sure it's separate from the previous chapter. We want some blank space between the chapter number and the first scene, so we'll add an empty line separator at the start of each new scene. Immediately following each scene, we'll add a custom separator, three asterisks denoting a scene change. We also want to set up page breaks before our title page, dedication and acknowledgements, to make sure they don't run into the main text of the novel. Here on the Page Settings tab, we'll set up the header and footer I mentioned at the start of the video. We'll make sure the box is checked to have a different header and footer on the first pages, and we'll specify that the header and footer begin after the front matter. We want the header and footer to be different on facing pages, so we'll check that box. We also want to exclude the header and footer from the back matter, so we'll check that box as well. Now tabbing over to header and footer text, we can set a different header and footer for our first pages, the main body, recto pages, the facing, verso pages, and the back matter. We want to leave the front and back matter blank, so I'll just focus on the body and facing pages. There are three fields where we can input text for our header and footer, representing left, center, and right alignments. On the main body, the recto pages, we'll enter the placeholder tags for the author's name and the page number in the right-hand corners using the page number tag. On the facing pages, we'll put the book title and page number in the left-hand corners. The project title and author tags will be replaced with the author and project title we've entered in the metadata section of the main compile pane. You can find a full list of tags by opening the help menu and clicking on list of all placeholders. I'm also going to set the page layout to 130mm by 198mm, the dimensions of a B-format paperback here in the UK, and set the header and footer to 10 point times New Roman. We can now use this preview button to take a look at our page layout and make sure everything is where we want it. In this case, the margins still look a little wide, so I'll adjust them from 1 inch to a slimmer 0.6 inches. I'm happy with how this layout's come together, so I'm going to click Save. The format is now available from the Formats column of the compiler, so I'll assign my section layouts in the Section Layouts column, then compile my manuscript. When choosing a location to save to, we can also check this box to automatically open the exported PDF in preview and take a look at the result. As you can see, all the formatting we've specified throughout this video appears in the finished product. The part number first appears on a recto page, once we get into the text the chapter headings are padded, the author's name and book title appear in the headers, and page numbers are in the outside corner. Our asterisk separators are in place, and the output looks very much like a commercial paperback. Earlier in the video, I mentioned saving this format to My Formats, so it could be available to other projects. Let's open up another project to test this. As you can see, when I launch the compiler, the custom novel format is available to use. 
I just have to select it, assign my section types, and I'm ready to compile a novel with the same format as the project we just saw. When I open this compiled manuscript, you'll see the same layouts and formatting have been applied to this project. If I want to change any of the settings in my custom novel format, I can control click or right click on the format in the list and choose Edit Format. Note that this option is only available for formats you have created and not for formats built into Scrivener. When editing a format, you can also use the Test button here to generate a quick preview of the format without saving. If I want to use my format on another computer or share it with others, I can use Export Format and Import Format in the gear menu. That's all we're going to cover in this video. If you want more details about specific compiler options, launch the Scrivener manual from the help menu, find the final phases section, and take a look at the chapter titled Compiling the Draft. If you're interested in learning about the other features of Scrivener, our other video tutorials should be linked nearby. Thanks for watching and happy writing.